Victoria, Stop Be Yellow, by was Vicki Tempe in the original days. And I moved to the Portland area in 74, and I don't remember if I became a member of KBU in 74 or 75, somewhere in that, basically pretty much a listener, you know, supporter, thrown, you know. Once in a while, I'd come down and get interviewed about energy, solar energy, or things that I was doing. But yeah, I didn't really become immersed until this building. One of the when 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 Kebu put out the request for proposals for a construction manager, administrator, manager <clears throat> hired by the station to organize the construction. Howard had done a set of drawings that would get a building permit. But they weren't very well. They weren't real. It didn't Detailed. need to be real developed. So I had those kind of skills, and I also had a lot of skills with volunteers. I had a. I was involved with a solar energy group in Portland called Portland Sun, and we would do hands-on construction workshops for greenhouses and solar water heaters and house remodels and things like that. So I had a lot of experience with understanding how to work with volunteers to do a task. And some people came, had no experience with construction at all, and some people were highly skilled, and they would be working next to each other. So I was at home, and I was listening to KBU, and... He had an office in his house. Yeah, and I don't remember who put the information out. I said, KBU has to move, we need to, we need to find a new home, if anybody has any experience with buildings or can help us find a home, please call station manager Vicki Tempe. So I did, and I called up and got a hold of Vicki Tempe, and she basically said, we don't really need your skills yet because we're not there. We haven't, we haven't identified a building yet. I was... I was taking down his name mm -hmm. and his phone number and all that. So. And he was going to start to spell the name. Stop the yellow is kind of a tongue twister for a lot of people. Oh, yeah. And he started to spell it, and I said, hold it, let's see if I can do it. So I spelled his name perfectly, and he was a little impressed with that. Mm -hmm. I thought, I Belushki. thought, you know, Anthony, stop the yeah, yellow. Must he must be a, be real, a real Italian. Italian. He'll look like Pietro Piluski in it. No. So as time went by, I was, you know, I'd listen to cable. I mean, that was my go-to station. And every, you know, pledge of drive would come along or some pitch for money and this voice would come on and I would just go, I'd stop and I'd go, wow, I can, man, I want to meet that person. What a, and I don't know, you know, I can't explain it. I was called in for an interview. So on a certain day, I went in to the station. Then, as now, KBU had volunteer receptionists. And we were in the Ford building downtown, and the way it was set up is there's an elevator, only way to get in. Elevator doors open into a reception area, and a receptionist at a desk, and then the broadcast and blah, 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 everything else is behind it. So on the particular day that the interviews were going to happen, and I had nothing to do with the interviews or the screening or anything else, about 10 outfits, architects and contractors, applied for that position. Uh, receptionist called, I was the backup for that particular receptionist that morning, called up and said, Vicki, come, come out front, I have to go put money in my meter downstairs, you know, I'll be gone about 15 minutes. So I went upstairs, I sat in the reception desk. The door, I looked at the list, I see, oh, that Anthony Sapiello, oh, I've been hearing about him, he, and he a, has a voice. Uh, he's on the list here, but he won't be here for another half hour at least, I'll be gone by the time he shows up. Elevator doors open. This total freak walks. I mean, he lives, was as far from architecture's architectural splendor. He's <clears throat> wearing red corduroys. I don't know what shoes you had on. And Probably then he was socks. wearing a blue and white, what in my family is called a hickory shirt. It's what loggers wear. It's a work shirt. Clean, tidy, not tattered. A black vest with a lot of political buttons on it. Hair to hair. A big beard, an earring or two, glasses, a briefcase with a closed Trojan sticker, 
He walks up and says, I have an interview with Bob Bailey at blah, blah, blah. And I, and I said, hmm. Now, Cape was a lot friendlier than it was then. There was a tendency, even during pledge drives, when new people would walk in the door to help, lots of times they wouldn't get the right time of day. People wouldn't say hello, there wasn't a greeting. And I had sort of basically trained myself to always say hello, offer my hand if a handshake seemed appropriate. And But when he walked up, I went, oh, he's wearing a costume, and I will stay in mine. I am in the receptionist costume. He's in the f total freak costume, and we'll just leave it like that for now. And so then the trade-off went. I went back to where I was supposed to be working. He went through the interview, and... Well, before That's the interview, I was I was sitting in the in the you know the lobby waiting to get called at the interview, and I, you know, wow, now I'm going to meet that freaky lady. Probably figured was she being in the interview or something, but oh, I forgot something. But you did. I did to say, hello, I'm Vicki Tempe, the station manager. Right. Normally, that's what I had trained myself to do. You know, just identify yourself, try to welcome people. But I didn't. I was like, no. So I'm sitting there looking around. I don't know, wherever Vicky is. By that receptionist. Wow, she's really, she's really cute. Right? Yeah, I was like, I wonder where that Vicky is. Well, the receptionist, she, she's kind of cute. Like, you know, <laughs> what can I say, right? <laughs> So I go in, get interviewed, I leave, Re receptionist is gone, somebody else is there, this is a Friday, Bob calls me up, he says, well, we want you to hire, we want to hire you to do the building, can you come in Monday to meet the crew and get started? I said, sure, yeah, I'll come in, no problem. So I said, okay, so Monday morning, showed up, and the old station had a long corridor you come in, there's a phone card to go back to the office. And Bob said, well, come on, we'll go back, we'll meet the crew. I said, ah, now I'll meet that Vicky Tempe lady because you know, she's the manager. I've got to meet her now. So we're walking down the corridor, and this receptionist, receptionist comes the other way. So I'm polite, I stop, and let her go to where you know, she's going to be the receptionist. I stop, Bob stops, she stops. Bob says, oh, Anthony, I'd like you to meet Vicki Tempe. Oh, so you knew me before I knew you. How do you do, Vicki? That's how we met over a year yeah. plus. Of long transition. Long transition. There. There's a mission here that's way better, than, bigger than any little part of it. That yeah, and, on yeah and that's what brought me to the station. Yeah. To, you know, first time I heard it on the, on the air. I was like, whoa. Not, not, not the, the music. Very, very, not much spoken word in those times. Phoebe Friedman oh, was yeah. on, and yeah. uh, you know there wasn't much. But you got, a, I got a sense of, ooh, this is an important thing here. What's this about? You know, not so that, and that's how we met because we both care about this <laughs> experiment in <laughs> community. Let's put it Anthony's that way. favorite show is the Dead Hour. You know. Well, Saturday. not my favorite, but it's one of my favorites. One of your favorites, yes. Yeah. He also, anyway, never mind. You don't need to know our musical taste. Why not? Yeah. Anyway.